hello and welcome back we are now on the topic research matrix the creation of the research matrix its relevance to your research and then I would also be presenting the sample template of a research matrix and then after that I would also be presenting to you a research matrix that has been filled up for a specific and particular research so let's get on to our topic for today so this is the sample template of uh, a research matrix used in our university I will be discussing the parts one by one but before that let us go to the function or role of research matrix to the research that you are writing so the research matrix is an abstract in table form or tabular form where the advisor the validator could oversee the content of your research easily at a glance and then eventually identify if there is something that needs to be revised replaced or tweaked in order to align and uh, provide more meaningful input in your research before creating the actual and full research. So in saying that, just imagine yourself going on a journey and then the research matrix serves as your map wherein you want to go with that particular journey. So your research is your journey and the research matrix would be the map of your journey. So it would uh, include information, specifications on where you want to go with your research, what you want to do with your research, what you want to use in completing your research. So basically, that is the purpose, the role, and the concept behind the use of the research matrix so before we go on to the main table used in the research matrix the basic information contained in this template would be the name of the school the department or college whether the writer is still in the college level or the senior high school or in the graduate level and then the type of paper that is being written whether the research is a thesis or dissertation or a college reaction paper or a research paper. And then following that would be the full name of the writer, the, the program, the course, or the major or field of specialization of the writer, and then the email or any contact number. Okay, so I am going to move the camera closer to the screen so you can see the headings for every column. So starting from the left, you have theories, research title, the research problem, null hypothesis, the specific questions, the instrument or the tool used, the treatment or the statistical formula used for the research, the sampling method used for the population, and the research method used in the actual research. So again, this would be the composition of the heading of each column. In one of the videos that I was able to upload in YouTube, I discussed theories or the theoretical and conceptual framework and its relevance to the research that is being conducted so this part of your research would fall into the theoretical conceptual framework that you have already created earlier so if you have already found you have searched and found the theory that is relevant that is fit and that discusses the process of your research you would only need to state that theory in this particular column of your research matrix and then on the second column you have the research title so again there's another video that I have already uploaded in YouTube 
entitled selecting the research title or selecting the research topic so the research matrix is just like a fill in the blank template so whatever theory or concept that you have chosen you just state it in the matrix and then on the second part the research title you the research title that was approved by your advisor or by your professor will only be rewritten in the matrix and then the next column is the research problem so in this column the research problem is just the restating of your research title in question form so how would you do that so if your research title is finding out the effects of a particular strategy or teaching strategy in teaching mathematics to a specific level of students you just rephrase that and make that in question form so basically the research problem is also known as the general problem of your research so from the title to the research problem it would be phrased as a question so it would come out like what is the effect of this strategy in teaching mathematics to this particular particular grade level in this particular school you can state the name of the school or for ethical purposes they strike out the name of the school okay the next one in our column is the null hypothesis so the null hypothesis number one is only used or is only present if your research is quantitative research there is no null hypothesis in qualitative research and then second null hypothesis in quantitative research is always stated in the negative form so it would always start with there is no significant difference with variable a to variable b or there is no correlation between variable a and variable b which at the end of your research you would either prove or disprove the null hypothesis so after the null hypothesis you have the specific questions the first type of question was the general problem which is labeled as the research problem in our matrix the specific questions are the breakdown of the general problem or the research problem into smaller specific questions that would help answer the main problem or the general problem of the research so what specific questions can be formulated in order to help uh, solve or answer the research problem then it would appear on this particular um, column of your research matrix so compared to the research problem which is only one general problem this one would be broken down into specific parts depending on the stages or areas wherein you need to answer those particular uh, questions in your research the next part of the research matrix will be the instrument or the tool used in your research so the instrument can either be the tool that you use to gather data or in order to introduce a particular strategy if you are conducting an experimental research examples of these instruments are questionnaires wherein you use to gather information and then you have pre-test and post-test wherein you use it when you are conducting an experimental research and then another instrument or classified as an instrument would be a lesson plan that uh, contains the strategy that you are introducing on a particular gr group or a particular class the next one is the treatment of the data this is also known as the statistical treatment of the data 
wherein you state the statistical formula that you are going to use in order to analyze the data that you have gathered from the instrument. And the next one is sampling or sampling method. The, the method that you used in identifying the respondents of your research from the population. And then uh, we have various types of sampling methods. One of them are um, random sampling. Another is stratified random sampling. Another common type of sampling method would be purposive sampling. Another type of sampling method is uh, fishbowl and so on and so forth. So from the type of... Uh, sampling method that you require from your research you can choose from this these uh, varied uh, methods of sampling so the last uh, column in our research matrix is the method of research that you will be using so an example of a research method would be experimental either it's a full experimental quasi experimental uh, correlation and so on and so forth so in the sample title that I gave you wherein we are going to test a strategy on a particular grade level in the subject mathematics this would now fall under experimental method so you state the method that you use and just briefly discuss the the function of that particular method that you are going to use in this research okay so the last part of our research matrix is the research paradigm which is usually located at the last page of the research matrix so a paradigm is a diagram a representation of the flow of the research presenting the stages included in your research Okay, so after discussing the template of the research matrix, we have a sample template here filled up with the necessary information according to the heading of the research matrix. So number one, theories. So the theory for this is stated here, which is constructivism. So make sure that you have clearly stated the main theory of your research which is relevant to your research title so on the second column you have the research title stated the effects of three constructivist pedagogies on mathematics and then the research problem as i have discussed earlier is just the question form of the research title so this research problem was directly derived from the research title and was converted in question form so that as you can read what is the individual effects of the three constructivist pedagogies which was lifted directly from the research title so the null hypothesis again as discussed earlier should be stated in the negative form and therefore the null hypothesis stated here are actually in negative form so there is no significant difference there is no significant difference and so on and so forth and then on the specific questions uh, as discussed earlier should be derived directly from the main research problem so these specific questions should, should help answer the general problem or the research problem and then the next part of our research matrix is the instrument tool wherein again part of the instrument would be uh, the tool that you use to gather data or the tool that you used in order to present or introduce a strategy or an intervention into a specific group so the tool used in this particular example are pre-test, post-test, and lesson plans. 
and then included are the strategies so it's collaborative learning and problem-based learning and then the next one treatment of data are the statistical treatments used in order to analyze the gathered data so ANOVA is used according to this table but aside from ANOVA of course there would be other statistical treatments included which is stated or reflected on the next page of this research matrix so the sampling method used here is purposive sampling okay and then the reason for selecting the purposive sampling is also reflected here and the last one is the type of method used in the research so I have mentioned experimental specifically this research matrix used quasi experimental for his research and included in the column or the stages in the implementation of the quasi-experimental.